Howdy, people gal. It is Ms. Kush. We are jumping in with exponential functions and writing equations from data and that sort of thing. So part of it we'll do with our calculator, part we'll do without. Um, part of it we'll use the calculator to check. So the first thing I did with this one is I thought of it a little bit as a sequence. So it appeared to be similar to a, a geometric sequence. So I took the first two terms that I had, the first two um, uh, output values or the, the y values and I and I tried to see was there a ratio um, and I found that it was three-fifths when I do 15 over 25 it reduces to three-fifths then I did 9 over 15 and that also reduces to three-fifths so it made me think that I could do my initial amount so at time zero or at, at an x value of zero I was at 25 um, so I wrote the equation f of x is equal to 25 times three-fifths to the x. This is my initial amount and this is my decay factor since it's between zero and one. Um, so then I picked up my calculator and I'm, I am I did the, the actual math without a calculator so I would put a problem um, like this on the non-calculator part of your test for quiz if I were writing it, which I usually am. Um, and so this is, uh, but we can use our calculator to help us check. Let me just make sure I have parentheses. That was not the most efficient way to type this in. Um, and I'm going to raise this to the x power. Um, and what I can do, I can set the table. I want to start, it's not, it defaults to 1, um, but I wanted to start it at 0, just so we can see what's happening here. Um, 0 is 25, yes. 1 is 15, yes. 2 is 9, yes. 3 is, well, is that equivalent? Did you know you can come and look over here to see? And sure enough, that matches what we've gotten there. So that is a good sign. Okay, so then there are some problems here where they tell us that we can add or subtract something um, and then figure out. So um, this previous problem was in the form y equals a times b to the x. What this is saying is now we've got something like y equals, well, a times b to the x, plus we might be adding some d value out here, okay? So they're wanting us, it could be plus or minus, but whatever. Um, they're wanting us to kind of figure out what's happening with these. So what I did as I thought about this is I looked to see, well, what am I adding? I added 6, I added 12, I added 24. Um, I think I'm adding uh, 48 plus 48. Um, and so this told me that... The amount that I was adding multiplied by 2 each time. So I'm looking at um, trying to have my B value here be 2. Okay, so what can I, um, if I, oh, I had I already worked this. Oh, you know what? Okay, noticing this, this is 6, and we were one unit more than that. And this is 1 more than 12, and this was 1 more than 24, and this was 1 more than 48. And then the next number here would have been 96 that I was adding. So what we might think of is that this is equal to, well, 6 plus 1, and this is equal to 12 plus 1, and this is equal to 24 plus 1, and this is equal to 48 plus 1. I'm sorry, this is messy, but you're following. This is equal to, not 46, 96 plus 1. And now what I can do with each of those is this is 6 times 2 to the 0 power. Um, so let's see. We're going to try this and say, okay, that a value here matches the 6 times 2 to the x power plus 1. Okay, if I'm unsure that I've done this correctly, I can come back to my calculator, come back up here, delete that out. We had 6 times 2 to the x plus 1. And we were, our table, do I need to set it? No, I think that's pretty close to what we would wanted. 7, 13, 25, 49, let's see, 97, life is good. Okay. Um, do I want to do the next thing? This one we're adding 8, then we're adding 24, then we were adding, uh, what is that? Well, let's see. These, these not going to lie, these got a little tricky. Let's see, if I'm one, I'm one more than one, one more than nine, I don't know that that's helpful because I'm one more than 33 and nine to 33 is not helpful. Um, oh, I worked this one shortly before I, I started the video. I haven't worked this guy. Um, let's see if this helps me. I add eight, I add 24. Okay, so that's three times the amount. Um, is this adding 72? Okay, so I'm hoping that I can look at a power of 3. Um, and then this would be adding... Uh, well, you guys, 
I always make these videos at the very end of the day, and my brain is just tired. 322 minus 108, 106 is 216. Okay. Um, three. So is it eight? Oh, you guys, these get tricky. These get really tricky. Let me keep going with some of the stuff that is um, a little more obvious. I'm sorry, this was this one was obvious to me, and I am tired enough that I'm not seeing what's happening here. Um, yeah, you get to see me and my weakness. I will come back and make another video. Let's do a little bit more on this video with the notes um, and where I'm a little more comfortable. Okay, so it tells us that the number of fans in a large sports stadium can be modeled by an exponential function here. And now they're telling us that there's 47 people in the stadium two minutes after the door opens. So basically, we have F of 2 is equal to 47. And there are that many, uh, 2,602 fans, 20 minutes after it opens. F of 20 is equal to 2,602. Um, and so they want us to write two equations. Well, they told us the format of the equations. So we can come up here and say, well, F of 2 would be equal to A times B to the 2, which is equal to 47. And then the other one is that f of 20 is equal times to a times b to the 20th, oh my, um, which is 2602. Is all this in minutes? Minutes, t minutes, yep, there are 47, two, two minutes, 20 minutes, okay, all of, our, all of our units seem to be just fine. Okay, so what I might do in this particular problem, oh my goodness, is, well, we can, we can rewrite so here, are, these technically are my two equations. It's this equation and that equation. Okay, aren't they lovely? Um, what I know is that this one can be written as a b squared times b to the 18 is equal to 2602. And the reason that I broke it apart like that is because I already know that a times b squared is equal to 47. So it's kind of a weird form of substitution where I can take this out and say this is 47b to the 18th is equal to 2602. Now if I expect you to do this without a calculator, um, I would keep the numbers more reasonable. Um, but let's try that. So, so 2602 divided by 47. Oh, that's really annoying. I didn't write this problem, you guys. I'm not sure I like this. Okay, and now we need to, that did not clean up nicely. Well, that's unfortunate. We need to raise this previous number to the, um, to the 1 over 18th power. <laughs> okay, what did we just solve for? So we found that b to the 18th was equal to that fraction, 2602 over 47. And that um, then when I took the the 18th root of that, um, or I raised this answer to that power, I got that b was approximately one point, let's, let's write down four decimal places, two, four, nine, eight. They want us to round correctly to the third, so if we write the fourth, then we'll be fine. Um, and what I might do is I might take this and store this as alpha b. I'm, that way I can hang on to all my details. Um, and then what do we know? Well, here's, here's a b value. To go back and find the a value, I can plug into this equation. And so I have um, that a would be equal to 47 over b squared when I take this original problem. Um, and so I know that b, I, could, I stored it as that b value. So I can say 47 over um, alpha b, oh, that's c, alpha b squared is about 30 point, uh, so a is approximately 30.0890. Okay, well, that was fun. I was expecting pretty numbers. We did not get pretty numbers. Um, the other option would be, um, so this is how what we would set up to, to find it with, with um, equations. The other option would be to come into our statistics uh, and clean up. I thought I reset my calculator. That's very strange to me that it's all there. Maybe I did not reset my calculator. Um, I can take those points and put, so it was 2 and then 20, and then the other was 47 and 2602. Let's see. And I can graph this. 
Okay, there's two points. And then I can calculate, I can come over here and do that exponential regression. And I want it in the form, notice it's a times b to the x, well, to the t, but to the x. So I can do this version right here. And look at that, we were right. Isn't that good? Okay, um, oh, I thought we were right, but anyway, it always makes me feel better. Okay, so let's see, we are 10 minutes in. Um, let, let, me, let me stop <laughs> as I waste 30 seconds of your life deciding. Um, we will do these next two in a video, and then um, I will go back and figure out those tables for you. So um, hopefully I can explain that a little bit better than I did a minute ago. All right, good luck. Go practice.